and the promise that was provided to him by God that because of his unbelief, mm. he was stricken, unable to speak or unable to speak until what God had promised through Gabriel came to pass. Amen. 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 And now this week, we're going to take a look at Mary, who just so happened to be the cousin of Elizabeth, but is also intricately woven into the story of the plan of salvation that God has for all of us. I find it very interesting that a barren woman and a virgin would both be caught up in the middle of God's plan for salvation. Mm -hmm. One woman who believes it's past her time and she cannot function in the way God has designed her to function. Mm -hmm. So because of her old age, she says that this is something, or, or her and her husband believe that this is something for the numerous times that they tried in their lives that just won't come to pass. Well. And then you have a virgin who has never been with a man ever before in her life. She is pledged to another man to be married, and Gabriel, the messenger of God, comes to her and explains to her that she will have a child, and that child will not be with her husband. Mm. <laughs> However, that child would go on to bless the world in such a way. That child would bring back relationship with God that the world had not had in over 400 years. Yes. So what does all this have to do with anything, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, my main point is this. As believers of God via the person of Jesus Christ, we submit to be servants. In our service, we humble ourselves to God's direction and requests of our lives. God's direction and requests of us can sometimes place us in awkward, isolated, and unpopular positions to achieve his ultimate aim. We must be prepared to play our role because it is not about us or how we feel about what we experience. It is about being aligned to the plan of salvation, not just for you, but for others to benefit. Brothers and sisters, if you don't take anything else that I say away, take away this last part. We must be prepared to play our role because it is not about us or how we feel about what we experience. It is about being aligned to the plan of salvation, not just for you, but for others to benefit. To go along with my main point, I have three supporting points, and I'll be out to you. The first point is ready. The second point, point is for thee. And the third point is the Lord's request. Ready for thee, Lord's request. Let's, just, let's hurry on, Carol. Ready. Ready is an adjective, as an adjective means, in a suitable state for an activity, action, or situation, fully prepared, easily available or obtained within reach. As a noun, it's available money, cash. As a verb, it means prepare someone or something for an activity or a purpose. Last Sunday, as I stated earlier, we focused on the life of Zachariah and Elizabeth and his unbelief as a priest in the presence of God's servant. We are the people of God today. Must remember we are a part of God's plan and not the other way around. We, God is not a part of our plan. We are a part of God's plan. And thinking that God is a part of our plan is probably our first problem. 
We are a part of God's plan for salvation, the plan to ensure the world comes to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Our jobs are not necessarily to preach in public, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, in, in, in every setting. It is for us to live according to the salvation we've been given in front of others. Forgiveness should be our mainstay, and we should seek to be like Christ in all settings. Our task is to take ground for the kingdom of God in all aspects of our lives. That means at work, that means at home, and that means in your personal life. Staying publicly, not, not just in words, but in deeds as well. Leaving in your wake a love so strong that others will ask, why are you always so happy? <laughs> you, you always so cheerful. What, 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 how, how can you be cheerful? You know, you ever, you ever pass people walking as going into work in the morning, blessed to be able to go to work, blessed yes, to yes. be able to have a job that allows you to pay your bills and take care of your family, but they got their bottom lips all stuck out as you walk past them. <laughs> Just mean and certainly for no reason at all. Then you get on the elevator with them and don't nobody want to say nothing. Don't nobody say hi, hello, good morning, or nothing. Just eat. Then they get to the desk and don't, don't nobody better not say nothing until you till around 10. Because that's the process from day till about 10 o'clock. And then right about the time you get to 10, you're thinking about taking a break and an extended lunch break. <laughs> See, we don't recognize that our cheerfulness opens the door for people to begin to experience the love of Christ. <laughs> to able to see and feel the warmness that is within you. People can't look at you and guess that the love of God is in you if your face looks like you got bush mouth. <laughs> that way. <laughs> you looking like if you were in your car, you would run the person who sat the next to you over. Just give me a minute. See, our opportunities to minister are the open doors to people that cross right in front of our path. Mm -hmm. right. See, that's why we've been placed in those situations in the first place. Mm -hmm. You are given the love of God and the joy of God and the impact and the power of God's salvation in your life. If you get happy on Sunday morning and then you get upset on Monday when you walk into hell's den and can't figure out why don't nobody around you love God like you love God. Mm -hmm. Your responsibility is to go into that den and showcase how God has given and protected and been there for you. That's right. That's right. It is not just about making a living and purchasing the things that make you happy. That's right. It is to continue to spread the goodness of Jesus Christ to those who need to receive his word. That's right. And you just might say, well, I don't know enough scripture. It's not about knowing enough scripture. The enemy knows scripture and knows more than most of us anyway. Mm -hmm. And if you think I'm lying, go read Genesis 3, 1 and 2. The fall of man where he tempts Eve and says, did not God say that you shouldn't eat? Or we think I'm lying, then go to the fourth chapter of the gospel. Luke can read verses 1 through 3 at the temptation of Christ. Where he tempted Christ with the word. Our responsibility began as stated by the prophet Micah in chapter 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O Lord, what is good? And does the Lord require of you to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? We are to take the example of Christ's service 
and love into every situation we enter. At home, at work, in church, while shopping, doing favors for others, mm -hmm. in money management, and dealing with people who have caused you harm. Mm -hmm. Mary, a virgin, was preparing to be wed to Joseph, mm -hmm. as it is custom in her community. She is a believer, and she has kept the traditions of her culture and her faith. When we go through something, one of the first things we say and bring to God is, I've been good. <laughs> I do what I'm supposed to do. I go to church as if going to church saves you. <laughs> it's just an aspect of salvation. It say going to church saves you about as much as baptism saves. Because baptism don't save you. You can go down a wet center and you can come up a wet center. And since y'all you know, are into baby baptisms, let me say it to you this way. If your life you live is hellish around the child you baptize, that child's life going to be hellish too. Just to make sure I don't miss nobody. <laughs> <coughs> what I am supposed to do, I go to church, I've been baptized, mm -hmm. that is it. It is the opposite of what you believe mm -hmm. and you trust me. See, because just because you believe and you trust in God, don't mean that you ain't going to get into some trouble. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it may be your belief that gets you in trouble. Right. See, when Gabriel, the angel, visited, he brings to her the greatest gift that ever could be experienced by anyone. He brings to the fact that she is going to give birth to the Christ child, but brings it to her as a virgin who is unwed to a husband, who doesn't have children, and tells her she is going to birth a child into the world that her and her husband didn't copulate. Well, well. Can you imagine the pressure that is Mary is under? Can you imagine that God has told you your life is going to be blessed, but yet and still you're going to bring it in as a single mother? What, what's the man that I'm wed to be wed to going to think of me as I am pregnant and we've never known one another in that way? Right, right. What is he going to think? Come on, mothers, what would you tell your son? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Four days. Mm -hmm. as, as, as a preposition, it means in support of or in favor of. Mm -hmm. Affecting with regard to or in respect of someone or something. On behalf of or to the benefit of someone or something. Having the thing mentioned as a purpose or function. That's for D. For is a prep. D is a determinant. Mm -hmm. Denoting one or more people or things already mentioned or assumed to be common knowledge. Used to point forward to a following qualifying or defining clause or phrase. Used to make a generalized reference to something rather than identifying a particular instance. Enough of a particular thing. Mary, who was a virgin, is advised by Gabriel. She will have a son whose name is going to be Jesus. This son is not between Mary and her husband, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
and she'll still go through the birthing process, which takes nine months. Mm -hmm. Now wait, wait. See, because you know, we get slick. We'll say, well, wait a minute, if the baby's God, then it shouldn't have to take nine months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 that's right. Because if God is blessing you, why, why you got to suffer like you suffer? If God is for you. No, oh, come on now. No, don't, don't, don't even look at me like that. This is why people don't come to church as it is. Because as soon as they think you got a relationship with God, the first thing they want to tell you is when you if you got a relationship with God and God is so good, then why are you going through what you're going through? You wouldn't have to have part time, you wouldn't yeah. count your pennies, you wouldn't have problems in your relationship if God is for you. Show the world she's pregnant and then live with the knowledge that her pregnancy is not by her spouse. And her spouse will also know his wife is pregnant and he didn't have anything to do with it. Well, well. See, see, see what, see what, see what, see, 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 mm -hmm. see what men, mm -hmm. see, see what we won't tell you. Mm -hmm. What we won't tell you is how fragile mm -hmm. my ego is. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, some of y'all think y'all know, mm -hmm. but see, you can hurt a man's feelings, mm -hmm. and he'll go into a cave emotionally and never return home. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then you trying to figure out why he won't emotionally connect to you like he used to. And 10 years ago, you done damaged his ego, so. Mm. Mm. Y'all sound Y'all must be considering something y'all done said. <laughs> about the societal pressure for this blessing from God. This can have a major impact on their lives and those who are close to them. You know, it's always that one person in the family thinks they're trying to make something right. They won't embrace the truth. They just going to try to make the mess livable. Instead of calling that thing what it is. Because see, sometimes what God does for you, you can't explain to nobody in the first place. And see, some people feel better if they can explain what happened. But when you have a relationship with God, and God blesses you in such a way that you can't explain what happened, then you can't explain it. All you can say is, all I know is that I prayed to God, I showed up and did the same thing I've been used to doing, and this happened. I don't have no explanation. why ministry or service to God is serious because you make a commitment to God and to do his will. And it, 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 when you say you're going to do God's will, it doesn't say that you're going to do God's will only when you feel good about it. It don't say that you do God's will, you know, because you woke up on the right side of the bed this morning. It didn't say that you won't, you will only do God's will when it's convenient for you to do his will. Because I can just imagine that Calvary wasn't that convenient. If Calvary was convenient, he wouldn't have sat in the Garden of Gethsemane and prayed big drops of blood like they fell out asking God if this cup could pass him. If it was convenient. But our society, our world, has us so messed up that we won't do nothing desire to be blessed by God as long as that blessing meets our specifications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Other blessings 
you know, it's, it's, it's got to make me, make me look good. <laughs> You know, I can't have holes in my shoes. Bless you, my well, well. I can't go shopping at the consignment store full time and be blessed by God. Right. You know, I can't go to uh, to dare to care and pick up food for myself and be blessed by God. Mm -hmm. That's right. The devil is a lie. That's right. That's right. It's got to make us feel good and special about the sin. You don't got to feel like we have problems, we like we're worth something, like people admire us and they get something because they're in relationship with us. Mm -hmm. It ain't supposed to make me feel like I'm no good and no good because I can't say no to myself. I want to love God, but I got this thing here that just makes me fight, makes me tussle, and sometimes I lose the tussle to myself, but I'm trying to be and, and do everything God wants me to do, but I just can't say no to this thing about me. And then it's got to give us status and prestige. Yes, if we like to wax eloquently about the leadership positions that we have in church, you know, some of us get so darn right special, we'll put on our checks, elder and or deacon or reverend, don't mean that you ain't bouncing checks all over. <laughs> 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 the commentary know they ain't no good, you could like to feel good. <laughs> sharing this with Sister Shirley. We went to lunch this week at work. We tried to do that uh, every now and then as, as, as employees of a man to talk about how good God has been because oh, yeah. of that man oh, okay. ain't no God. I'm going to leave that straight. <laughs> 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 but we were having this conversation and I belong to a professional association and I had gotten uh, 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 nominated uh, to serve a leadership role in this organization and because of prestige I let my ego say yes. Well, well, well. And then the, the bottom flew out of my life. Stress was coming in ways I had never experienced stress to come. Look, my, both of my eyelids through the week was twitching. I'm making sure I'm watching my blood pressure medicine. I'm trying to figure out what the heck is going on with my life, all this pressure going on. And I walked into the meeting where we were going to talk about uh, the, the, uh, the, the results of the election. And I walked into the meeting saying, Lord, well, if it be your will, I'll stand up under this if it be your will. Because at that point in time, see, I had a chance to ruminate with the pressure to understand what this extra assignment would mean to my life already being stretched in my life as it was between having a mother who battles with dementia and dealing with her multiple moves that she has, and you never know who she's going to be on a given day, not because of anything that she's done, but because of the disease that she has. Then I'm dealing with people who might as well have dementia because she's working with them every day, and you don't know who they're going to be on the one day before the next day, but you don't want to get to deal with me. Then I come, and I come to church, and I try to preach life to you, but I don't feel like I got no life in me. Preach, preach. Yes. That's all right. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I walked into the meeting. We get through all the pleasantries, the agenda set up for, and get down and do business. Do business is time to deal with the election. And when they said the first office and didn't say my name, well. my soul smiled, the biggest smile I've ever had in my life. Because yeah. the door that I wanted got closed. But the door that I wanted to open and close probably gave me more money. Yes, 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 yes. See, sometimes when you're serving God, 
No is the biggest yes. 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 Thank you. No. You did not see or did not want. We'll begin to open for you. That's right. Can your will, can you take your will and substitute your will to fulfill God's will? See, this is what the impact of a blessing on your life is. Because to be blessed, to have grace and mercy follow you all the days of your life, I wonder if we truly understand what this means. It means that you will encounter hardships, yeah. denials, yeah. setbacks, pitfalls, mm -hmm. terrible people, yeah. and ultimately you will encounter your own decisions. Yeah. Yes. 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 You ain't came face to face with nothing until you come face to face with yourself. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at the results of what you've done in the mirror and you're asking God help. But don't nobody want to go through the 
diamond and make you the promise. Mm -hmm. And see, that's what the blessing does. See, God is trying to get you from where you are today to something that reveals like your darling son, Jesus Christ. And to do so, he's got to give pressure, force, heat, resistance to your life. So at the appropriate time, you will shine like you. We want God to provide covering and protection, but we don't want to go through, we don't want to physically go through the fire to experience the blessing. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, what I'm saying is this, to be blessed, be what we must go through situations we do not choose mm -hmm. and that are unavoidable to us. Mm -hmm. Blessings are not designed for your ease and comfort. Blessings are not designed to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. And blessings are not designed to keep believers that blessings are designed to keep believers moving forward to the completion mm -hmm. of God's will. Mm -hmm. The Lord's request. A, a request, I'm oh, sorry, a Lord, Lord is it, 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 someone or something having power, authority, or influence, a master or a ruler. A request is an act of asking politely or formally for something. Mary has a reverence and respect for God mm -hmm. and his power and influence on her life. So she takes the Lord's request as word. Mm -hmm. Think about it for a moment. Think about what she will face as she follows God. Mm -hmm. First, she's a virgin, mm -hmm. uh -huh. pledged to marry someone else. Mm -hmm. right. She will become pregnant before the marriage mm -hmm. and carry the baby to term during the early period of the marriage. Mm -hmm. Marriages have ended for all sorts of things. <laughs> but being pregnant, not oh, by yes. your husband. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You accept this responsibility for God, thinking of the impact it has on her community. And if you think I'm joshing with you, read Deuteronomy. 22, 13 through 21. It gives the rules in the Jewish community for marriage. So God, knowing what the rules in the Jewish community for marriage is, decides that he is going to have Mary birth the Christ child, who is in the line of David and will forever take care of the people of Jacob. Mm -hmm. These are not my words. Read up to see what Gabriel told Mary. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the conversation. Just so you know that this ain't Gerald. This, this is what's in the word. Let me, let me, let me see, see what we're talking about here. It says, the verse 22 says, He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Mm -hmm. That, that's, that, that is what Gabriel is saying to Mary about the blessing that she's going to get, she's going to have mm -hmm. as a single mother in Jewish community. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, 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 and get this. See, it, 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 it is, it is, it is and, I, and I want to make sure you understand, we understand time. It is six months after what has happened to Zachariah and Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth is six months pregnant now with John. It is shortly after this that Elizabeth comes to visit Mary. And the Holy Spirit, because it was promised through John, would be so powerful in John that at, at, the, at, at the speaking of Elizabeth back to Mary, the baby jumps in Mary's womb. Because of John. This was God's promise. This is God's promise in this situation that culturally you think shouldn't be happening. See, this, this is why we don't understand what a blessing is that people get disillusioned and they leave church because things happen that they don't want to happen and they think that God ain't in it. See, it's not that God is in it. God is just trying to get out of you which ain't no good for you so you can be more God. The question is, do you want to hold on to what's separating you from God or do you want a relationship with God? Because see, it don't matter what nobody else says if you know your life is right. 
people don't say, well, she, if, if he or she believed in God the way they said they believed in God, then, then why they losing their house? <laughs> why they lose their job? Mm -hmm. Why did their husband and their wife leave them? Mm -hmm. Why their kids down at the courthouse? <laughs> <laughs> And the first thing we say is, well, shoot, God must not love me because I'm going through hard times. Yes. Hard times is not a sign that God doesn't love me. Yes. As a matter of fact, God will verify and vindicate his love through your suffering. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, we run from it. Mm -hmm. See, we don't want that. Because mm -hmm. we don't want to have to change. Because most of our problems are based upon decisions that we make in life that are against God. Mm -hmm. Well, the dreams and the directions given by God go unfulfilled by believers because we are initially afraid of the potential failure and ridicule from following God. Serving God can lead you to be embarrassed, mm -hmm. to be talked about later, mm -hmm. to feel like a failure, to give and feel like you're being taken advantage of to have no time for yourself. It's amazing that, that people quote this verse in Romans incorrectly, 8 and 17. See, we go for the last part and we won't read the first part. See, and if we are children, we are heirs also, mm -hmm. heirs of God and fellow heirs of Christ. If indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified together. See, we want the glory, we don't want the suffering. No. Mm -hmm. Because following God is to go against your own personal will, your desires for ease and comfort. <laughs> People turn away from their faith because they cannot get their way. They do not want to follow God's direction and will not and will, and will for their respective lives. Notice not turn away from people, but they turn away from God. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's an interesting argument. This is what people will say. I just don't like people, but I love God. <laughs> <laughs> and it always bothers me, because I know that that person can't be reading the Word. That's right. Because the word itself says, how can you say you love God, whom you never see, and swear you love man, gay man, who you see every day? Because man is created in God's image. So to, to hate man is to hate God. Notice, not turn from people, but turn from God. People are supposed to leave the church. You are leaving the fellowship of believers because of some reason. Leaving God is disobeying his will, and you can sit in church every Sunday and still be actively disobeying God's will. Mm -hmm. His will for you to be active in ministry. His will for you to live according to God's desire for your life. His will to love and fully be open <coughs> out desire for return. Lives live full of unforgiveness. Brothers and sisters, as I close, God is only requesting us to live according to a standard, a quality that can and will cause us challenges. Mary hadn't done anything. She was ready to marry. According to her custom, she had done everything right. God comes to her and says, I want to bless you. And her words, listen to her words in 38 because they're so, and you think about the pressure that all of this brings. Listen to what Mary says. She says, and Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
May it be done to me according to your word. So God, I accept for my life what you have designed for my life to have. And I'm going to live according to your will and your way for my life. Yes, yes. The problem we have, brothers and sisters, both for those individuals who have walked in the faith for a while and those individuals who have those individuals who have matured in the faith and those individuals who haven't. The problem we have is a will problem. Will it be your will? 